I'll talk a bit about uh, network slicing and its implications. So let's see if the slides is moving. It doesn't seem to be. Ah, okay, it's moving. Okay, so uh, first of all, we'll start. Uh, I need to press hard, it seems. Ah, okay, I need to press hard. So first of all, we'll start with a uh, definition of what is network slicing. Uh, because like network slicing is clearly an element of the whole 5G story. Uh, it's not only about enhanced mobile broadband, it's also mainly, or mainly the, the main benefit of 5G is bringing business services on the uh, radio network. And so network slicing gives you then a technology to separate these services in a, a logical way on, let's say, a common infrastructure. And also giving, let's say, all of these services the uh, SLAs uh, that they need. So uh, be it like uh, data rate, be it like latency, be it like QoS, whatever. So it is uh, a, a very important element in the whole 5G story. Oops, and I'm pushing the... It's not going the right way. Okay, let me see if I do better here. I do better here. So uh, first of all, we have to look at uh, what are some examples of the slicing. And so there are different use cases. So what we see within uh, Nokia is that the first real use cases are more in the enterprise or the campus kind of area. So, and I'll give an example at the end of the, the session where we have uh, uh, worked together with, let's say, an operator and a company to, uh, to do that. So enterprise campus, but uh, there's clearly also other applications like if you look at more rural areas where you could do like a, a fixed wireless access in combination with mobile. And so you need to give the capacity to both, uh, to both the fixed wireless access and the mobile part. So you need to separate these and give that uh, uh, clear um, bandwidth to both of them. There are other applications which are, let's say, more in uh, the a national kind of uh, scope because, for instance, public safety, if there is, uh, let's say, a, a nuclear ramp or whatever, so that you can uh, give the information to all of the inhabitants of a country. There's also some applications which are more around residential, but there you need to be careful with uh, network neutrality, in fact, which could impact uh, the whole thing. Uh, if we look at uh, network slicing, it is clear that we need to look at it from an end-to-end -end perspective. So um, a UE can connect to multiple slices, that is clear, but you need to look at it from an end-to-end -end perspective within the network. So not only looking at the run and the core, so the mobile part, but you also need to look at the transport part. And mainly what you need to do as well is glue all the things together, because like as we will see, how uh, a run recognizes a slice is different from how the transport ne network will handle this slice. So there is uh, some kind of mapping which will be needed and we will talk we'll be talking about that. So a debate that you see also uh, within operators is like, uh, do we go for soft slicing or hard slicing? So soft slicing means that you uh, share the resources and that you can get the benefit of statistical multiplexing. So this is in general what we have been doing in uh, fixed networks for business services for 20 years. Look at uh, layer three VPNs and layer two VPNs that we have offered. So the main thing there is that we're doing scheduling based on priority or resource group. So this is also possible within the radio access part. So you can dedicate a part, for instance, to the fixed wireless access and then have another part for your enhanced mobile broadband. Hard slicing is really like this full separation, like I was just discussing. So it means that there is no statistical multiplexing anymore. So within the radio, you can do that with specific resource blocks, specific groups that you can define. In the transport network, it either means like a dedicated network, or you can use TDM-based channelization technologies like Flex Ethernet. Flex Ethernet in this way has been promoted as a technology to reduce the latency. 
but in fact, there are a couple of elements that you need to look at. First of all, if you want to reduce the latency, the easiest way is to really bring the content down to the location because that will reduce the latency. Uh, other element is, will it provide really the lowest latency? Not really, because you have to wait for your channel, in fact. So it will give a deterministic latency, clear, but it will not be maybe the, la the lowest latency. And also, if we look at uh, standard flex Ethernet, so you have the different elements like uh, bonding and you have like channelization. So the channelization is uh, only uh, defined for, let's say, blocks of 5 gig. And you have only like, let's say, 50 gig and 100 gig interfaces defined. Where if you look at what uh, a 5G base station will be, it will use like either a 10 gig interface, if you're doing just backhaul, or a 25 gig interface within the front hall environment. So it's a different kind of interface where this is defined or standardized. So how will uh, the things be visible or the network slides be visible in the radio part? So uh, if we look at it, so as stated, network slicing has been uh, mainly defined for 5G and then mainly 5G standalone, meaning like you have a 5G core element. So within that, you define the slice in the radio access part by the SNSI, NSSIA, so the Network Slice Selection Assistant Information. So that one is uh, confined out of two elements. One is the SST, the slice service type, which is like an 8-bit uh, indicator. So there is in fact like a number of reserved uh, indicators, like 1 to 3, which is like the ones which have been defined by 3GPP. And there is 128 possible for, let's say, operator-defined slice types. And then there is the slice differentiator, which is, could be like 24 bits, but this is like an optional element. So it means that in the beginning, the thought is that there will be like a very minimal amount of slices, but maybe it can grow and then you can use this SD element. So uh, network slicing was a 5G element. So within 4G, uh, you can do it as well, but you're making use in fact of another field, the QCI, which is a quality indicator. So it's like a, a bit like a hack that you're doing to get this done. This QCI is eight bits, and some of the values have been defined uh, or have been standardized, but there are still some values that you can use for this uh, network slices. So how is it visible within the run element? So a run element these days with 5G can be like a combination of different elements. You have the split into the remote unit, the distribution unit, and the central unit. So the remote unit between, or the connection between the remote unit and the distribution unit is based on eCIPRI. And the eCIPRI header has clearly an Ethernet header, but the IP header is optional. So probably how you can identify a slice here is by a VLAN. Between the DU and the CU, and from the CU in the back hole part, you have an IP header clearly there, and you can use also VLANs to separate, let's say, the, the slices. So once we are uh, behind the, the central unit and coming into the transport network, so we'll need to map this in the transport networks into VRFs. And so you can map a slice to a, an LSP, in fact, because like, based on the requirement, you, it could be possible that you need to take a different path in the network. So you need to have some traffic steering, and that depends on how you define the slice and uh, where you need to go to, clearly. So it depends how you def de uh, define the slice, for instance, based on a VLAN, or if you use a combination of a VLAN plus source IP. So this means that in the end, to get to slicing, you need to do some mapping because there's different elements which are used in the different, uh, or in the different interconnections between the elements to get to your end-to-end. -end. So you start with your SNSSIA, then you go into VLANs, then you go into VRFs, and to go, you go into LSPs. So this is uh, really depicted here on the slide. So you need to do this mapping exercise. And if there is a low amount of, uh, let's say, these slices, you can probably do this in a one-to-one -one way. If you're going to get multiple slices, you need to probably do this in an end-to-one -one fashion. Because some of the elements, like for instance the run equipment, may be limited in 
for instance, let's say, the amount of VLANs that it can handle. So if you need to do that, you need to create less visibility on the different slices. Besides the mapping of the slices, there's also the QS parameters that need to be mapped. I'm not going to go into the details of that here, but it's a natural evolution also that you need to look at. So if we look then at the, the, the LSPs, you need to traffic engineer these because you need to be able to look at latency and other constraints like bandwidth. So if we look at networks today, RSVPTE is clearly still deployed in many networks as a way to do traffic engineering. Segment routing is clearly the new kit on the block and is what most operators will be moving to, in fact. There's different flavors of that. SRMPLS is a mature technology. With SRV6, you can use, let's say, uh, the normal uh, base SRV6. We know that with the uh, SRH, it will get like a big overhead. So we need to look at uh, the compressed SRH to get this in a, let's say, deployable fashion. Uh, traffic engineering you can clearly do with a controller. And this is giving you the most of the flexibility. Because with a controller you can define your intent, which could be like latency, but it could also be a combination of latency, bandwidth, and uh, how you protect things and so on. So it gives you the flexibility to give very difficult constraints to your network, and then it will do the calculation. It will bring these LSPs up in the network, and then you can start measuring, for instance, the bandwidth, and based on congestion, you can change the paths in the network. You can do, in fact, also traffic engineering without a controller. This is like FlexAlgo, uh, known technology. Uh, the thing is like, it does not give you the complex capabilities that you have with a controller. So you can only optimize on cost and on latency. Uh, if we're looking at the evolution of um, the slices, so in the end, so it's clear that we will start with pretty static uh, slices. But in the end, the goal could be like a full automation of your slices, meaning like as a customer, you're going to go into a service portal and you're going to say like, I need this connectivity between these five sites with that QoS and that latency. And then you log into the portal and you will uh, instantiate everything automatically in your network, which means like the coordination between your radio access network, your transport network and your core elements. So some examples that we have seen uh, real life deployments with uh, customers is like, this is an example, and there's even a video on YouTube that you can look about it, of uh, Telia and Sandvik. Sandvik is a mining company, and they have like a campus network where there is like their business applications, but there's also residential people living there. And so they have, uh, Telia is offering them a virtual private network where they can connect uh, the, the business, uh, the business uh, services to that uh, business network. And so they can do that with priority and, and the, the, the QoS parameters that are needed. So the thing is what you see here is that you have multiple antennas. These are of Telia, so not of Sandvik. So it's like a, a virtual network from the operator that you're offering. And these uh, antennas are then connected, in fact, to an edge pop. And that edge pop will also bring the, the traffic directly to the local data center in the site. So the local edge pop could be something like four or five kilometers away from uh, the data center. You could also look, well, this is like if you have, if the operator or if the customer has its own data center, you can naturally look also at uh, integrate with things like Google Antos, uh, AWS, Microsoft, and so on, which are offering also capabilities to host applications. So this is like, a, 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 let's say, a very localized kind of example. Uh, we can also extend that to, uh, let's say, a, a full network. And then you can look at where are your uh, data center locations, uh, where are the applications that you're going to use, are they in a central data center? Are they more in a localized edge where you need to have them for, let's say, uh, ultra-low latency services? 
we have also uh, deployments of that, uh, even with uh, 4G uh, slicing in the world. So, uh, coming to the conclusion in the end, so it's clear that network slicing is an end-to-end -end kind of uh, deployment. So you need to look at the life cycle of that. So you need to be able to create, delete, maintain all of your uh, transport slices or your slices. What is important is also like the visibility. So you need to be able to look at a slice and see is it operational, uh, is there a trouble, uh, who is impacted, uh, what can we do about it. So the visibility is also one of the, the feedbacks that we get is an important element. So for that you need to have this closed loop automation uh, which is like monitoring for instance bandwidth latency and bring that back and use that for doing the network optimization. Uh, there's also demos that we can show around this at our booth, so I would welcome you to uh, visit eventually our booth. Thank you. <laughs>